For quite some time we have been talking about natural dyes and synthetic dyes and then we have seen that how for natural dyes metals play a very vital role. Similarly, in the synthetic dye series there is something called metal complex dyes and we will dedicate some time to understand the chemistry and then go on to see how dyeing, effective dyeing can be carried out with these metal complex dyes. So, today's lecture is primarily to make you aware of this new class of synthetic dyes which are called metal complex dyes. The role of the metal as the name suggests if it has a metal then what is the role of the metal? Mostly the light fastness and the wash fastness of the direct dyed fabrics particularly cotton can be improved by an after treatment with metal salts of copper and chromium. So, it was observed that if direct dyed fabric particularly cotton because why we are spending so much of time in talking about cotton because cotton is the most popular fabric which is used for garment in our country because of the tropical conditions and therefore, it has good uh, you know uh, perspiration absorptivity. So, people prefer to wear cotton. Now, nobody will wear white cotton all throughout the year. So, there is a need to put coloration or dye it. Now, the two ways that we can dye cotton is by means of synthetic dyes or by means of natural dyes. And among synthetic dyes, metal complex dyes are one class of dyes which are primarily meant for cellulose, cellulosic fiber and cotton is one of them. So, how it is done? First the fabric is dyed with direct dyes and then an after treatment of metal uh, which is like you know you can consider it as a mordenting method with copper or chromium is done. Now, I told you time and again that copper and chromium are you know not very eco friendly metals. So, therefore, how can we minimize the uh, use of copper and chromium salts in dyeing procedure at the same time maximize the light and the wash fastness. So, in order to improve the light and wash fastness these metal treatment after treatments were carried out. The role of the metal atom is to form a complex with the dye stuff already present on the fabric. So, as what we have seen in the case of biomordant as well as in the case of metal salt mordanting in cotton natural dyeing process. Similarly, the role of metal is no different from that. It forms a complex and therefore, the name metal complex dyes. The metal complex dyes there these are after treatments are essentially two bath process and therefore, consume more time. Obviously, once the dyeing is done with the direct dye, it is the second step where the after treatment is done. It is not a simultaneous process first thing. Second thing is that after the dyeing is done, the fabric is air dried and then it is put into the bath of the metal and then allowed to react with that metal solution for some time at least 2 to 3 hours and that is for an industrial process any extra step will add on to more time in the final product preparation. And whether it is time consuming, whether it is en energy consuming or whether it is money consuming process will not be regarded as one of the best methods for industry. Sometimes wool dyes by dyed by chrome dyes have separate chromium mordant added additionally during dyeing called the metachrome process. Sometimes of course, the meta that is the simultaneous chroming also can be done and that is called metachrome process, but these processes are very lengthy and cumbersome. 
Why? Because first the wool is dyed with chrome dye, already chromium is present in that and plus additional chromium salt is added and therefore, the whole dye bath becomes extremely hazardous, you see hazardous from the point of view of its disposal. But these processes were nevertheless developed particularly for wool dyeing. Some metal complex dyes can be prepared from chrome dyes which are themselves not suitable for dyeing for that substrate. Suppose if chrome dye is not able to provide the metal complexing metal atom, then in that case this additional uh, metal is added. Thus an azo that is a new land can be converted to palatine fast blue GGN after complexing with chromium. The dye has two sulfonic acid groups of which one neutralizes the positive charge on the chromium chelated uh, forming a zwitter ion while the other sulfonic acid group acts with the amino group of the fiber by electrostatic forces on protein fibers. So, you see the way it acts at least this metal complexing dye which is an azo dye must have two sulfonic acid groups one will one sulfonic acid SO 3 H minus will try to electrostatically neutralize the positive charge on the chromium metal which is uh, you know coordinated and the other sulfonic acid then reacts with the amino group of the fiber because you know that protein fibers proteinaceous fibers like silk and wool have amide linkages. So, it is the amino group of the amide which is then uh, uh, you know linked up with the sulfonic acid group. So, acid base ionic interaction and uh, the acid and uh, metal coordinate linkage. These are the two different types of coordination and ionic bond formation during the complexation of the metal which is additionally added to the dyeing process for meta complex dye formation or metal complex dye formation. What actually happens? The new LAN and the palentine fast dyes are soluble because of the presence of sulfonic acid groups in them. However, they require fairly large amounts of sulfuric acid in the dye bath. Now, both the precursor which is a neolan and metal added palantine which is also having the same structure. See because the main structure of the azo dye is not changing, it must have an azo linkage and must have two sulfonic acid that is a neolan and that neolan after reaction with the metal either copper, chromium, nickel, cobalt can then be transferred into a palantine uh, dye which is nothing but metallated dye or metal complex dye. Although both are soluble and the solubilization is primarily because of the oxochrome SO3 H minus. So, you see that uh, you know this particular sulfonic acid group is responsible for its solubility. When we were talking about other dyes like reactive dyes and many other dyes sulfur dyes and so on, one thing that and VAT dyes we were talking about the solubilization that is a primary effect and it cannot be ignored because only when the dye is solubilized it will penetrate into the fiber. That is how the com chemistry or the compatibility that we are talking about is brought about. If we do not have a dye which is soluble, then the dye will only sit on the surface of the uh, fabric and it will not uh, penetrate and unless and until the dye penetrates into the core of the fiber, we do not say that even dyeing has occurred because it will get stripped off in the first washing if it is just a matter of surface 
action because surface action will not have any bonding, it will just be electrostatically held up and that can be washed off with the water or detergent and so on. So, no dye will pass through this test of being a good dye unless and until it has penetrated and for good dye penetration solubilization is a prime factor due to which free amino group are protonated which cannot then form coordinate bonds with the metal atom. As a result coordination between the amino group of the protein and chromium atom of the dye is suppressed. So, because the dye bath has to be kept at a very low pH with the help of additional sulfuric acid which is a very strong acid. There are many things that happen in a competitive manner. Now, because of excess of sulfuric acid there is a huge amount of H plus which is available in the dye bath. So, what happens the amino group of the protein fiber gets protonated with that and therefore, it is not available for coordination with the metal bond, metal atom and therefore, the amino group of the protein and the chromium atom of the dye are then not coordinating and they are uh, that this effect is suppressed. So, that is in order to keep that effect suppressed dye bath must be highly acidic and this acidic uh, condition is brought about by the addition of sulfuric acid. The properties of metal complex dyes obviously, we have to look at the features and properties of metal complex dyes because so far you have learned about reactive dyes, you have learned about fiber reactive dyes, you have learned about sulfur dyes, you have learned about VAT dyes. So, what is so different about this particular dye? Let us try to understand. No pre or post after treatment with metal salt is required because already it is an after treatment. So, any no other additional step is required. Some of them are brighter than chrome dyes. However, their fastness is slightly lower than the chrome dyes, but still it is good enough. Due to their ease of application and fastness properties, they are used for dyeing high class dress material, hosieries, ladies wear and so on. So, you see they have an advantageous situation because they are uh, able to dye the finest of the fine material and if the hosiery which is a knitted fabric is also able to take up these dyes metal dyes in a very efficient manner. Now, the efficiency of any dye is actually evaluated by two factors time and again I am trying to emphasize one is the fastness property and the other one is the penetration which is due to the solubility. So, according to that this dye definitely has an edge over many of the chrome dyes which do not have these properties. So, they are also sometimes brighter than the chrome dyes and they can be used for brighter shades as well as lighter shades both and they are used for very fine materials which are used for ladies wear, hosiery, dress material, high class dress material and so on and so forth. These metal complex dyes that are otherwise known as pre metallized dyes show great affinity towards protein fibers. So, as we saw that because of the sulfonic acid group interacting with the protein amino group of the protein. Uh, or rather the amide of the protein fiber, it is a very compatible dye for this particular proteinaceous fibers and under that category we have silk and wool. Generally, it has been seen that metal complex dyes are chromium or cobalt complexes. So, if we take a look at the various types of metal complex dyes that are available in the market 
most of them are chromium or cobalt complexes. Among the popular metal complex dyes, a variety known as 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes finds application for dyeing polyamide fibers. Now, there are as you would know that every broad class of dyes have different subclass of dye. So, 1 is to 2 metal complex dye is a class of metal complex dye. For dyeing wool, metal complex dyes are most favored. The following table shows the comparison between 1 is to 1 metal complex and 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes. So, for wool this is an ideal metal complex dye is very good. For cotton also it has been explored and it has been found to be very good. For polyamide fibers also. So, there are two class of metal dyes one is 1 is to 1 metal complex dye the other one is 1 is to 2 metal complex dye. And let us see a comparative analysis of what is their you know performance according to their um, uh, reactivity. The metal complex dyes generally cannot be said to be belonging to a particular application dye class. Why? Because they can be used for various uh, purposes and the only amendment that one does is to make a, pre, a post treatment or an after treatment with metal salt. In fact, metal complex dyes belong to numerous application classes of dyes. For example, they are found among direct acid and reactive dyes. So, the starting dye can be either a direct dye or an acid dye or a reactive dye. After the dyeing has been done with these respective dyes separately of course, the metal after treatment can be done to all three of them. So, one cannot say that metal complex dyes are belonging to only direct class of dyes or acid class of dyes or reactive class of dyes because this methylation process can be carried out as an after treatment in all the three classes of application. When applied in the dyeing process, metal complex dyes are used in pH condition that is regulated by user class and by the type of fiber that is to be dyed. It may be wool, polyamide, cotton etcetera. The pH levels for wool typically ranges from strongly acidic ranging from 1.8 to 4 for 1 is to 1 metal complex dyes and moderately acidic neutral ranging from 4 to 7 for 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes. Now, you it is common sense that one cannot use very high acidic solutions for cotton and cotton blends. Why? Because it will completely decompose the cotton material and therefore, strongly acidic conditions are only meant for more you know um, uh, fiber which has more tensile strength which is stronger like polyamides and wools. But mild or uh, moderately acidic or neutral solutions of dye bath can be used because they are in the range of 4 to 7. Now, pH 4 to 7 can be with withstood by cotton and cotton blends. So, it is this which is ideally suited for cotton and cotton blends and for having 1 is to 1 metal complex uh, type of subclass of dye, one has to use very strongly acidic dye bath. But for 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes, it is possible to do it under moderately acidic or neutral condition. Types of model, um, uh, metal complex dyes, we have just spoken about the two varieties 1 is to 1 and 1 is to 2 metal complex, but still we will take a, a more a closer look at it. Chemically speaking, metal complex dyes can be broadly classified into two classes. 1 is to 1 metal complexes where one dye molecule gets coordinated with a single metal. 
in one is to two metal complexes one metal atom is coordinated to two double di molecules. The di molecules are typically a mono azo structure which can contain additional groups like hydroxyl, carboxyl or amino groups. They can form strong coordination complexes with transition metals like nickel, chromium, cobalt and copper. So, there are various possibilities as I told you from the neoland which is a non metallized mono azo structure to a palantine which is a metallized structure of the same. It can have a 1 is to 1 ratio that means one metal atom, one di atom, one di molecule. Whereas, in the case of 1 is to 2, it is one metal atom and two di molecules which are coordinated to the and the metal atom can have variance. It can be a nickel metal or a chromium or a cobalt or copper. So, that many varieties of dyes are possible. Now, when we try to take a closer look at the features of the metal complex dyes, they are excellent to handle and have good light fastness, excellent light fastness, medium washing fastness, show very good level dyeing and penetration characteristic, can cover up for the irregularities in the substrates, they are water soluble dyes. Because see for a dye to be good dye if falling into a good dye category, light fastness, for washing fastness, solubility which is related to penetration all must be from good to excellent category. Otherwise the dye is of no use for the industrial application. One can use it in the laboratory. But that is not the final aim because these dyes have been designed primarily to cater to the textile industry and the textile industry has various kinds of natural fibers and synthetic fibers. So, it is a competitive market where newer and newer dyes are required to be able to successfully dye these. Uh, you know sometimes it is even blends of the natural and synthetic fibers. So, the main challenge is to be able to dye and that is next then issue is level dyeing. Unless and until the penetration is good, the evenness in the dyeing will not come. So, all this is interrelated and adds on to the category of good dyeing properties. Application on different materials because if we are talking if a dye has a more versatile feature of being able to handle or being able to use for natural as well as synthetic dyes then nothing can be better than that. Metal complex dye is used for a variety of application like wood stains, leather finishing, stationary printing inks inks, colouring for metals, plastics etcetera. So, you see from the non textile point of view also it is a very good dye. At the same time it is very suitable for wool, silk and polyamide and the metals that can be used are copper, chromium, cobalt and nickel as what I just told you a while ago. Then comes the fastness properties of the Fabric dyed by metal complex dyes show good light fastness. However, the wet fastness is moderate. This we have seen that when we were looking at the features of this. So, now one has to weigh as to what are the main properties and if the main properties are from good to excellent, if one or two property is not so good, it is from fair to good a category, we will still accept that dye to be a good dye, particularly when darker shades are to be considered. So, the goodness is only you know at uh, par when we are talking in terms of darker shades, but for lighter shades there is no problem. However, the fastness is also dependent on the choice of fiber and the type of dye category. I have told you that the entire processing 
of dying or the process of dying is basically related to the chemistry of the fiber and the dye. So, that is what makes whether it is going to make the light fastness better or uh, not so good or whether it will make the wa uh, wet fastness better or not so good all that will be dependent on what fiber is being used and which of the metal complex dye has been used along with it. These dyes are either dyed at neutral pH to weakly acidic to even sometimes strongly acidic pH and we discussed this point a while ago because this dye also has a big role when we talk about the pH of the dye bath because these dyes are again very very pH sensitive and therefore, these dyes must be understood that they can be either worked with on a neutral to mildly acidic or at strongly acidic pH as well. 1 is to 1 metal complex dyes, let us try to take a look at this subclass. These dyes have good leveling and good penetration into the carbonized wool. They work at very low pH that is 1.8 to 2.5 with sulfuric acid or 3 to 4 with formic acid hence are not at all suitable for cotton or blends of cotton. We have talked about this a while ago, but still we should understand that what are the do's and what are the don'ts. You know you cannot use a very acidic dye bath for cotton or cotton uh, uh, blends because what will happen that the cotton will get completely uh, uh, eaten up by the acid because it reacts with the acid and it is highly corrosive for the cotton fabric. So, sulfuric acid which is present in the dye bath and we discussed why sulfuric acid needs to be used because it is a big source of first thing is that the acid uh, pH of the dye bath has to be between 1.8 to 4 that is the range and in order to obtain that range a very uh, you know strong acid is required. Therefore, the use of sulfuric acid is required plus the sulfonic acids that are participating are also replenished uh, in some way by the sulfuric acid and so on. Globe salt is used as exhausting agent organic leveling agents have to be used as well. So, just the way we saw that in many of these dyes exhausting agents have to be used some electrolyte sodium sulphate which is globase salt needs to be used for this purpose. So, that more and more dye can penetrate that is called the exhaustion of the dye and leveling because it should not accumulate, it should help the dye to migrate into the other parts of the fiber in a very facile manner that is the role of the leveling agent and that also has to be added in, in when we are dealing with 1 is to 1 metal complex dyes. Now, let us take a look at the 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes. These dyes show moderate migration properties on nylon but show overall very good fastness properties. Both ionic and coordinate bonds are formed with metal complex dyes and fiber that is the nylon. So, we have seen that for dyeing nylon 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes need to be used. Why? Because they can form ionic and coordinate bond together with the metal of this uh, com metal complex dyes and nylon fiber is best suited when 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes have to be used. So, therefore, you know already there are information that has been established the acidics can be done very uh, or fabrics which can with withstand very high acidic dye bath solution they can be dyed by 1 is to 1 metal 
complex dyes whereas moderate or mildly acidic to neutral uh, solutions of dye bath can take only 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes. So, that is the kind of subclassing that has been done for the main class metal complex dyes. So, that the ease of uh, you know choice is dependent on the nature of the fiber and therefore, not everything can be dyed with every metal complex dyes that is absolutely uh, clear and categorically they have been separated out because of the high acidity and moderate acidity of the dye bath. Now, one such dye which is called dilosol S type of dye, we will discuss a little bit about the chemistry and why is it so popular among the metal complex dyes. Dilosol S type dyes and the additive can keep the perfect physical state of wool and cashmere after dyeing. That means, you know there is this very fine wool and this wool needs to be dyed in a very tender manner and for this because we already know that metal complex dyes for wool actually acts at a very high pH. So, dilosol S or rather low pH when, it, when we talk in terms of the scale of the pH, but high acidic solution. Dilosol S type dye series is made of improved high coloring strength neutral dye that is 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes. So, this has been improved you see wool under normal condition or cashmere wool under normal condition cannot sometimes withstand very acidic solutions which are ideally required for 1 is to 1 metal complex. Now, this dilosol has been improved version where high coloring strength can be imparted at a neutral pH and 1 is to 2 metal complex dyes are used along with it along with reactive dye. It has high fastness and very close dyeing properties. The pH of the dye bath adjusted by leveling agent and accelerant is just kept at 4.5, which was not possible if one was using one, uh, 1 is to 1 metal complex dyes. So, that is where you know dilosol has been really improved to take care of dyeing of wool. This dye system is characterized by high dyeing exhaustion rate and excellent dyeing reproducibility. Dilosol S type dye series has only 15 colors, but complete chromatogram that can blend almost all the trend colors. You see, you know, with the 15 colors, a gamut of colors can be prepared by permutation combination. So, because of that and because they have very high dyeing uh, exhaustion rate and excellent dyeing reproducibility, because see that is what the kind of dye industry needs that how many colors can be generated, what is the reproducibility, can the same shade be reproduced again and again and again in different batches and the third thing is that it should have good exhaustion. If it has good exhaustion, the dye bath has very little to be disposed and the effluent problem is taken care of. In dilosol S series dyes, dilosol yellow S 4 G N, red 2 B, blue S 2 R can be used as 3 primary colors of medium light colors, dilosol yellow S 2 R, red 5 G, gray 5G can be used as 3 deep primary colors. This kind of dye has the features of good compatibility and constant leveling property and fastness. So, if you look at the various you know different types of dialosol dyes, you know they can be used for light dyeing, for dark shade dyeing as well as because of these 3 combination of these 3 primary colors many many other colors can be generated from 
these three primary colors and of course, there are 15 main colors that have come up in the dialosol series and many permutation combination and a gamut of colors can be made out of it. Dialosol S type which is a primarily meant for wool and especially the very delicate cashmere wool dyeing system can provide the following features and benefits. So, what are the features? The dyeing can be done at pH 4.5 to 5 and less fib fiber damage occurs, different colors and deep depth can be used, can use the same dyeing bath, only 15 varieties concentrated colors are available, complete chromatogram can be actually generated from these 15 varieties and they have high exhaust rate. Now, exhaustion rate when it is very, very high as I told you effluent disposal problem automatically comes down. So, that makes it a very good dye because we are using do not forget that we are using metal here and so this metal can create a havoc if it is, is if it remains in the dye bath and if the exhaustion is poor. So, because the dye uptake is enough and the dye bath is left with less amount of uh, the metal, it is the disposal is not so crucial. There are several benefits of using dialosol. It is protective towards wool and Kashmir quality of wool which is very, very fine. Simple process, easy to control production reduces inventory, better adaptability to market, match up the trend color requirement, good reproducibility from sample to mass production, high reproducibility between cylinders, less sewage discharge. So, you see that it has most of the dye quality which an ideal dye must have and therefore, this class of dye, although one would think that they fall in the category of hazardous dyes, but because of its good you know exhaustion, because of its good fastness property, because of its good you know reproducibility, because of its good shade variation that is possible and less sewage discharge, all this put together this metal complex series of dyes as one of the best in the synthetic dye series.